Hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome back to our live videos. We had a little break last week and um, I had a recorded video, but I missed you all and I'm super excited to be back with you guys live. My name is Bev McCullough of Flamingo Toes. This is Adelaide. I want you guys to see she's getting to be a big girl. Isn't she sweet? Isn't she sweet? Um, we call her Addie. She's super mad at me right now because <laughs> She was playing with buttons before I picked her up so you guys could see her. She's like all over the place. And she wants to go back to playing with buttons. So, everybody say hi to Addie. Say hi. Say hi, baby. Okay, you have to go. I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, that wasn't as successful as I hoped it would be, but I wanted you guys to see her. She's getting to be a big girl, and she's so sweet when she's um, not in the middle of playing with buttons. <laughs> she's sweet now. She just had her mind on other things. Oh, uh, she has grown, Dolores. She's gotten to be a big girl. She's five months old last Thursday, so we're hoping she's a nice big cat because we have big dogs, and so... Um, you know, the size difference, if she's super tiny, she is more likely to get like stepped on. <laughs> Let's be honest. They're not very careful around her. So we're hoping she's a nice big girl when she grows up. So anyway, I want to see who's here. How's everybody? Let's see. Wendy, Cheryl, Trisha's here. Deneen, Judy. So glad you guys are here. Uh, Robin's in Memphis. Hey, Robin, did you get any rain yesterday? We got a storm finally. It was so hot last week. Fortunately, we missed a lot of it on our trip, but we came back to really icky heat <laughs> and uh, had a storm yesterday, which cooled things off, thankfully, but um, I'm not sure what's going on this week. I don't think the weather knows. <laughs> it's going to be one of those weeks. Well, Sari's here. Sorry. Do I say your name wrong every time? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Dawn's here. Anita. Oh, Anita's packing up for a potential hurricane. Oh my goodness, Anita, please stay safe. I hope you're okay. Um, P Pamela's here traveling and listening. Hey, Pamela, thanks. She likes the cat blocks. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Roxanne's here from Greenville. Oh, everybody, check in with Anita. Okay, you stay Anita safe, Anita. My goodness. Therese is here. Linda. Val's here. Hey, Val. <laughs> oh, you guys like Addie. Yay. Katarina is here from Germany. Hello, Katarina. Thank you for um, watching. You are a doll. <laughs> Dolores says she can take care of herself when it comes to the dogs. She can. She's not afraid of them at all unless they get like super barky, but she definitely holds her own with them. She rules the roost around here for sure, <laughs> and we're all fine with it. <laughs> hey, Melissa. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, you guys, today we are sewing up the um, shoe fly blocks. These are really cute. We're going to make six of these little guys and then we're going to make two cats. This is the tall cat. It looks strangely not orange here, but it is. <laughs> um, and we're going to make up a short kind of laying cat. It's not really shorter. It's just laying. And so we're doing that um, today. So I'm going to kind of talk you through the differences in the cats but they're assembled very similarly so that there are, they're easy to use the same kind of tips and methods that we'll use for the long one as you'll use for the tall one. And they actually go together really quickly. Those shoe fly blocks are fast because all you're having to do is just make a few half square triangles and then you sew them all together. So that's easy. And the cats, even though there's multiple pieces as there always are with picture blocks, um, they, they're not crazy complicated. So, 
You guys are welcome to make them more complicated if you like, or less complicated, it's up to you. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But, um, and so we do have a lot of sewing today, but I wanna show you guys a couple things real quick first. I wanna tell you, we had a lovely trip last week to visit our kids. We visited um, my son and daughter-in-law up in Boston. We went through um, like Western New York to kind of get there. Um, and so we visited like Ithaca and Utica and then, because my husband has a friend there in Utica, so we visited him real quick. And then we stayed a few days with the kids in Boston. And that was really fun because we left the city and we went and checked out lighthouses in Maine and visited some states we'd never been to. And then we drove down to visit our daughter who lives in Virginia and um, ate crab with her and had a really good time. Saw more lighthouses. It was a very lighthousey, lighthouse-ish <laughs> trip. So it was really, really fun. I missed seeing you guys on Monday, but it was good to get away. We hadn't been on a vacation, just the two of us. And, you know, we hadn't done a road trip in quite a while. And we love a road trip. So it was really fun. So I hope you guys all had a good week. <laughs> Anita said I should put Addie in my quilt. <laughs> love it. Okay, you guys, let's look at a couple things and then we're gonna talk about giveaways and then we're gonna start sewing because we have all the things to do this week. So I wanna show you some fabric that I got when I was on a trip a couple months ago in um, Utah and Idaho. It was in May and so I bought a bunch of uh, fabric and I wanna show it to you and I want you guys to tell me what to make with it. <laughs> okay, here we go. So this is, these are, so Riley Blake is the distributor for uh, Liberty Cotton, quilting cottons. They don't do like the Tana Lawn or anything like that. Um, they do the, all the quilting cottons. So if you um, find Liberty fabrics, those are distributed from Riley Blake Designs here in the U.S. So these are all four Liberty fabrics and I fell in love with them. I don't know if they're supposed to go together but I thought they looked really pretty together. So here is kind of the foundation and the one I have the most of. Look at that print, you guys. Isn't that stunning? It's like this great butterscotchy gold with just a single color like Liberty Flower. It's pretty traditional. Um, and then I got these to go with it. This is kind of a little like peacock feather. It's a really nice, it might be hard to tell, but it's a blush with um, kind of a gray and navy on it. Then I got this sort of two color, it's also blush, but it's got a little floral on it. Isn't that pretty? And then to kind of tie them all together, I got this print, which is really cute little vases and flowers, but it's shades of like the blush and the yellow and the blues. So here's what I'm hoping, and I have one or two yards I have more, I have a couple yards of these. I'm not entirely sure. And I have more than a couple yards of this. I don't even remember what I bought. I just knew that when I saw it, I was like, well, I have to have that. So this is kind of the foundation of the quilt. And then these are my coordinating prints. So I want you guys to give me all the suggestions in the comments of what you think would be a good quilt pattern to make with it. It could be one of mine or it can be somebody else's, I don't care. <laughs> Um, but I just fell in love with these and I thought they were really pretty and I feel like this is a quilt that would look great any time of year because this gold would be kind of fallish but also with the light colors it would be something that I could leave out year round. So and I can, um, I don't know what to do as a background either. I'm kind of debating maybe a navy and then all four of these would really pop against it. So. <laughs> Here is what I need you guys for. Give me ideas. I would love to know all your suggestions. So that is my Liberty uh, question. And I'm gonna put those over here. And then um, I also wanted to tell you guys, let's see. <laughs> oh, let's see, Tracy said she just got home from a quilt retreat about 40 minutes ago and crashed on the couch. Oh, welcome back, Tracy. That's exciting. My computer's being funky, so I have to keep fiddling with it. Tessa says the vase and flowers are her favorite. I love that one too. I love that it's kind of different from the other three. And so it really adds kind of something a little bit more like to look at, I guess, you know, where the others are more subtle. <laughs> 
Oh, let's see. Dolores asked if any girls in my family needing a quilt or a new baby girl on the way. No babies are on the way in the family, um, and I'm keeping that quilt. <laughs> so it's for me. <laughs> but thanks for asking, Dolores. <laughs> The yellow, Dawn says the yellow could be a cat and the prince a floral garden. Pretty, Dawn. That's cute. Hey, Leona. Okay, I have for you guys a very secret sneaky peek of a brand new book that Fat Quarter Shop is coming out with next month in September. It's called Simply Jelly Rolls. You might have seen them kind of posting about it. It's from um, Fat Quarter Shop. The It's So Emma is Fat Quarter Shop's publishing company. And there is going to be a sew along with this book where um, the quilt is kind of a sampler quilt made up of different blocks from this quilt. And it's so pretty, you guys. So I'm going to sew along with it. I'm not sure the exact dates. It's a little bit later in September. So I'm hoping that I can um, get some early yardage of uh, afternoon tea, which comes out in October. And I want to sew along with that. So that's my goal, but I wanted to show you guys a few cute quilts in here and um, get you guys excited. I have the book linked in today's video description if you want to pre-order it. It's not out yet. So again, this is a super like sneaky peek of it for you guys, but I marked a few pages here. So my favorite in here, and you guys know just like with all Fat Quarter Shop patterns, they're really well written and they're... Um, super super easy to follow along with right so look at this one you guys this is called the baklava quilt and um so it's called the jelly roll book um riley blake doesn't call our jelly rolls jelly rolls because that's a moda term we call them um roly polies but it's the same exact thing it's a two and a half strip roll so this is a book designed for that but look at this one you guys this is does anybody recognize the fabric it's sweet acres isn't that a fun quilt? It looks so fast to make. It's called baklava. I'm gonna show you, oh, it's called baklava. Here's another picture of it. Isn't it pretty? I want to make this quilt so bad, and I don't know if I wanna make it with Sweet Acres. I definitely have roly polies of Sweet Acres, so if you want to make it up, you can pick it up, but it's just the roly poly and background fabric, and it's simple and really pretty because you can see all the fun colors of the fabric collection and I just love it. I think this one is so cute. This is the baklava quilt. And all the quilts in here are named like desserty. So, and I'm a big sucker for baklava. <laughs> so let me uh, show you another one. Look how cute this one is. This one's called Biscuit, but it's a, like a little spool quilt. How cute is this? Isn't it darling? So that one's really fun. And then this one, yeah, so this one is the caramel quilt. Look at those flowers, you guys. I love, love, love that. It's a really cute, clever way of doing the, the leaves and stem. I haven't seen that before. I think that's really fun. So I love the caramel quilt. They're all good in here. I just wanted to show you a few of my favorites. And then this one is called the cornbread quilt, which can be desserty, I guess. <laughs> But this one is really cute and patchy. Look how cute that is. With the like just squares and the different, um, how it really kind of just looks sort of scrappy. This is a total picnic quilt to me. I love how scrappy and fun this one. And um, this one would, all of these would be really great for gift giving too. If you need a fast quilt to give someone, this kind of thing is perfect. I can't resist picking up jelly rolls. Um, I actually have a really cute one of maple that was our giveaway from last week that I saved up for something. I haven't used it yet, but um, I just love a jelly roll quilt. They're so fun and I like picking up jelly rolls. So this is, um, these are some of my favorites in here. Again, you can pre-order the book now. Here's some picture of some of the ones on the back. Look at those, aren't they pretty? Here's the Sweet Acres one. <laughs> it's my favorite. Can you guess why? Um, and when it comes closer to the giveaway time, I will be doing a, uh, to the giveaway time. When it comes closer to the um, so long time, hello, you can tell I was on vacation last week, then I will be doing a giveaway for a copy of the book. But 
if you guys don't want to wait, which I highly recommend not waiting <laughs> for that, uh, pick it up in um, at Fat Quarter Shop. It's linked in today's video description. So, uh, Deborah, I do not believe that she asked if the sew along takes more than one jelly roll. I don't believe so. I think it just takes one jelly roll. But I will look that up and um, reply to your comment. <laughs> Oh, you guys are sweet. Um, Wanda asked if I tried great pastries in Boston and New York. I did not. I did not eat a single pastry the whole time I was there. Isn't that sad? I feel like that's sad. <laughs> not that I ate badly by any means, but oh, yay. Yeah, you guys like the caramel one. I know. It was really pretty, isn't it? Okay, so every week we do a giveaway, and... Um, this is just my way of saying thank you guys for tuning in and being such a great community. It's really easy to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment on the video. You can do that live or later in the week. And the Monday right before the video, I draw the comments from the previous video. I put the comments in a hat and draw at random a winner. So last week we had a fun giveaway. This is a collection that was out last year in the fall. It's called Maple. It is stunning, you guys. It's got rust and blush and kind of a corally color and then this great almost olivey brown, I don't know. And then there's some shades of blue, uh, purple and lavender that I really love. You can still find maple in stores, but it's getting harder and harder to find because it was a collection from last year. So this is a 10 inch stacker. I have a cute vintage happy needle, uh, needle miner. I'm okay. I'm all over the place today. We're just gonna just deal with it. <laughs> uh, tape measure. This is a 60 inch Lori Holt tape measure. And then this is kind of a set. It's a really cute Liberty um, Apple pincushion. Isn't that darling? More Liberty. And then, of course, some pins to go with it. Fun, right? And our winner from last week is Cindy Kurtz2191. <laughs> She commented a few days ago, so if you are watching Cindy, send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com, and I will get this out in the mail to you. It is y'all's responsibility to contact me. Um, I've tried contacting the winners in the past, and it does not work well. <laughs> they don't respond. So um, if you are a winner, then you need to check the following week. If you entered, you need to check the following week to see if you were the week's winner. Um, otherwise, the prizes go back in the kitty. <laughs> so for this week's prize, I have a really fun, this is um, every year, okay, backing up. Fat Quarter Shop does sew sampler boxes once a month. They're really great. It's a box of fabric and notions and a pattern, and it's a subscription box, so you don't know what's coming in it. That's every month, but then periodically throughout the year, you don't have to be a sew sampler member but they do um, special holiday boxes. So they do a spooky box, they do a Christmas box, they do a patriotic box. Uh, what are the other ones, you guys? Is there a Valentine's box? I feel like there's a Valentine's box. And I can't remember what the others are. But I saved this box for you from last year. It is a uh, the spooky box from 2022. And it is so cute, you guys. This um, is a really fun box. There is a, this is um, a half of a 10 inch stacker. It's from the collection Bad to the Bone by My Mind's Eye. So it's really traditional colors, all kinds of cute oranges and blacks. It's just perfect for Halloween. And there's a lot of collections out there that will go with this if you want to use this instead of for the pattern or if you want to find a border or something like that. So this is called Bad to the Bone, and it's um, basically a custom pre-cut. It's a half of a 10-inch stacker. So instead of 42 pieces, it's 21, I believe. Yes. So that is a really cute fabric bundle. Isn't it fun, you guys? Then there are these sew magnetic. Um, this is a little sew tights, but it's a skull. Isn't that so cute? It's like a sugar skull. And it's great for, you can use it as a needle minder, I think, um, or you could use it um, as a, like a clip if you are, if you are trying to hold your fabric, if you're making a bag or something like that. These come in really handy. Here is some thread potion, um, thread conditioner. 
if you do a lot of stitching that's very handy then there is some uh, thread and some little clips in here for you guys some like wonder clips and then this is the pattern that comes with the quilt and so you have what you need with this you get the stacker and so you'll just need background and binding to make this really cute little quilt and it's got uh, jack-o-lanterns and ghosts on it isn't that a cute pattern it's called scary faces I love it so and here's what the pattern it's not super big it's a 42 by 42 so it's perfect to hang on the wall or you can use that as the center and add some borders and then it will be bigger and more like lap size I love a, a quilt like this size for the car because I really need to be under something in the car um, I just feel much more comfortable that way. So these are great like car size. So that is the prize for this week. There's some other stuff in here. Um, and I don't know what it is. I'm not sure what that is. Um, and then there's, there is a coupon on the back here, but that expired. So, cause this is from last year. <laughs> so there's just some assorted info about each of the things. If you want to check out all the notions and stuff. So that is this week's prize. And all you have to do to win is uh, leave a comment. And that's, well, that's what you have to do to enter to win. <laughs> so that is this week's prize. I hope you guys like it. <laughs> and if you, it is a fun box, right? I love it, Jackie. Yay, I'm glad you like it. So keep in mind, it's going to be pretty soon before, um, it won't be too long before they uh, open up sales for the 2023 spooky box. So. If you guys aren't already signed up for the Fat Quarter Shop newsletter, I highly recommend doing that because that is a great way to find out um, when those things, those specialty boxes and all the sales. So check, check that out for sure. Okay, so are you guys ready to sew? Let's sew. Oh my gosh, I was supposed to go fast and <laughs> it's 20 after. All right, we're going to go fast now. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to make up six little uh, shoe fly box. These are fun and easy to make and each of them is made from a different fabric. I have a cutting guide for fabric linked in today's video description. If you want to make your quilt, if you're sewing with my Haunted Adventure fabrics, which is what I have here and it's out in stores now and I'm sewing with it as well of course. So if you want to make yours just like mine, you can download that cutting guide. You can also use it as a guide for your own fabric. If you have a different bundle that you're using, just cut out a little swatch of the fabric and tape it over mine. And that way it kind of helps you guys keep track of what you want to put where. It's a good planning tool. <laughs> so you need six different fabrics for these. They're really fun. And then we're making two cats. So the cats use two different fabrics. Um, the tall cat uses this spider web with the orange pennants and then the laying down cat uses the, these are the light kind of yellow pennants. It uses the orange pennants and then the yellow spider web. So you don't have to do it that way. Um, I just did it that way so that the two cats looked a little bit different. Um, and assembly on the cats is pretty similar. So we'll talk about that when we get to the cats. But first we're going to do the shoe fly blocks. These are very simple, very fun to do. And we're gonna make up one of these and you're gonna just follow these instructions to make them up. You're gonna make a total of six of them. So they go really fast. You can definitely use chain piecing on them and, um, and you'll just speed through them. So these are simple. What we're going to do is start with um, half square triangles for the corners these are made you can make them either way but um, I wanted to you can either make them with a stitch and flip or you can make them as half square triangles these corner pieces um, I wanted to make two at a time so that's why I wrote the pattern using half square triangles again you do have to purchase the pattern to sew along with us but I have it linked in today's video description so if you're wondering about measurements or what pieces what size pieces to cut you can pick up the pattern in my shop or you know, check with your local favorite quilt shop. <laughs> so what we're gonna do by starting is we're gonna draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of our background fabric. So I don't normally go over it like three times, but I'm trying to get it so that you guys can see it. So a simple line is good enough. So because my uh, background fabric is 
one, it is actually a print. It's one of the prints from uh, Haunted Adventure. So it's got these little stars. So I do want to make sure I'm doing it on the wrong side. And it's non-directional. Um, that does definitely helps things quite a bit. So it doesn't matter which direction I do it. If you are using directional fabric for your prints, like we did on these little pennants, I wanted all my pennants going kind of the same direction. You can see that they all kind of face down. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little scratchy. One sec. Um, then you will be more careful when you are placing your diagonal lines on your print fabric. So the skeleton print is non-directional, so it doesn't matter, but we're gonna pretend that it is. And so to get your directional fabrics all the same, you're going to place your diagonal lines opposite each other, just like we did last week, two weeks ago with the churn dash blocks. Same exact method, um, you're just going to have these diagonal lines run opposite each other. Can you see that? And so you're going to, because we're making half square triangles, we're not sewing on the line, we're sewing a quarter of an inch on either side of the line. And now we're gonna take these over to the machine and sew, okay? Okay, so I'm going to chain piece these uh, so I'm going to do, um, I would, if I was doing all of my shoe fly box at once, I would cut everything out at the same time and I would trace all my lines and have them all ready to go so that I could sew them all at the same time. So I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch away from that marked line on both sides of the marked line. So I just didn't cut my thread there. There's a gnat in here. <laughs> um, so I didn't cut my thread there. I just kept sewing and I'll cut them apart at the end. So I'm just gonna flip these around and I'm going to keep going. Really, really fun, really fast. You can throw on a movie <laughs> or listen to a book. I would love to know what you guys like to do while you're sewing. Are you movie watchers? Are you are you music listeners? What do you like to do? <laughs> um, so I've got these sewn and I'm just going to clip them apart with my little scissors I keep here. And now let's go trim and press these. Okay. <laughs> oh, Laura says she loves the spider web fabric. Yay, Laura. <laughs> and Rita says she loves the spooky box. She would like to make this for a grandson whose favorite holiday is Halloween. Love it, Rita. That's so fun. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put these on top of each other and trim them both at the same time. You guys know I like to do that. It just speeds things up just the tiniest bit. You just want to make sure before you cut them apart that they are as, as perfectly aligned as possible. <laughs> that way you have approximately the same um, size seam allowance. So now I'm going to press these open and I'm going to press towards the print fabric. Let's shimmy our wool mat over just a bit. So I'm going to press these and I'm going to do all four of these. We need four per shoe fly block. So you'll make six different prints, so you'll do this six times. But you can see that it goes together pretty quickly um, and it's not too complicated. It's definitely something you can throw a movie on if you're a movie watcher. Sometimes I like to watch movies. Um, sometimes I like to listen to music. If it's a really complicated quilt, I will typically not have something on that I've never seen before. <laughs> because inevitably I'll be like, what just happened? Was it important? I don't know. So I can put a movie on that I've seen a bajillion times, um, some sweet romantic comedy or something like that. Um, and I can have that on, but um, typically not something new that I've never seen before. <laughs> 
Okay, so we've got all of our little pieces pressed and we're gonna trim two at once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place the print fabrics up, well, the main print, you know, the orange pieces opposite each other and the seams are opposite each other because I pressed them to the dark and I'm using my finger just like I would when I was nesting, when I would be nesting a seams, making sure those seams nest right up against each other and I'm gonna trim two at once. So these are gonna get trimmed down to two and a half inches. Again, those measurements are in your uh, booklet, your pattern booklet. And so what I'm doing the first time is I'm lining up that diagonal line that's on my ruler with the seam and I'm making sure that there's a little bit of that block on all, all the way around what would be two and a half inches. Let me turn this around so it's the two and a half inch side. It's a little bit easier to see that way. There, now you can see where the two and a half inch mark is, and you can see there's a little bit of fabric on all the sides. And doing that, make sure that all four sides are trimmed nicely, are nice and straight, and so when we go to assemble it, it's uh, perfect, perfectly straight. And it makes assembling the block a lot tidier, a lot cleaner, <laughs> and a lot easier to put together. So I trimmed two sides to start with. I flipped my block, my little mat, and now I'm trimming the other two sides. This is especially important if you are working with really tiny pieces. The smaller the piece is, the more accurate it needs to be before you sew it into something else because it's so small. <laughs> There's not a lot of room for error there. So now we have two cute little half square triangle pieces that we trimmed at once, at one time. <laughs> and we're gonna repeat that for the other two. If you had done your diagonal lines the way I showed you with the directional prints, then when you are done, you will end up with four half square triangles all facing different directions. So you'll just turn them when you go to assemble them in the block, you'll turn them the right way. So it just depends. These pennants are extremely small. And so if you don't take the time to worry about directional fabrics, no one will know that but you because really even from here it's really hard to tell what that print actually is so and you guys know how I feel about somebody criticizing your directional prints in your quilts right they don't get to be under your quilts anymore if they do that <laughs> they are banned from quilting for an undetermined amount of time that can be determined by you I guess <laughs> Okay, we're getting silly, it's fine. Okay, so now I have four half square triangles, and so to assemble our block, you're going to need one more print piece. This is the A print piece, and then you are going to need four background pieces. These are your W background pieces, and so you're gonna place them just like this. You can see these are background, it's a little hard to tell on the white. And then you're going to put your half square triangles in each corner with the point of the print triangle facing in. So you want all of your triangles voice facing in. Okay, just like that. And you're gonna sew it together just like you do a nine patch. So you'll sew, you can do it all at once like I do. I have that, we've done that um, in past videos for this sew along, so you can go back and look at that just like we did with the turn dashes. It kind of basically forms a nine patch block, right? So, or you can sew them together row by row. So your first row together, your second row together, your third row together, and then sew the rows to each other. I'm not gonna do that because these are pretty basic and we have cats coming up. So if you guys have questions about the shoe fly blo blocks, let me know, but that is the prep for those and they're really very simple and fun. Once you have all six made, then you're going to sew them together. Just like, well, can't see because of my face but just like this so you're going to sew two on top of each other and you're going to do that three times and that is going to give you the really cute little um, shoe fly section of this row there is sashing that goes between those so a, check that out once you've sewn your cats together you're going to sew Y pieces between your um, cute sashing blocks okay so 
that's all that's involved with these. <laughs> all right, let me check the comments here. Oh, Dawn says she likes to listen to books on tape. Uh, Null is uh, loud music, love it. Linda listens to opera music. Wow, I love it, Linda, that's great. Dolores watch YouTube's quilting videos while she sews. Very good, expanding your mind, uh, Dolores, that's awesome. Leona is loud music, usually 80s. Okay, we could sew together, Leona, I love it. And Roxanne is uh, country music, but today she's sewing on binding to three quilts of Valor quilts. Oh, I love it, Roxanne, thanks for doing that. Okay, are you guys ready for kitties? So this is the tall cat block. And um, we're going to sew up the laying down cat block. So there's a few pieces here. It'll take a little bit to cut them because you're using different fabrics. Keep in mind the direction of your prints. If you are sewing with the spiderweb fabric and you want it to be all directional, then note in your pattern, the G piece needs to be cut up going this way not against the you know just look at your your back order bundle and kind of decide so these two pieces your fabric needs to be cut with the spider webs going up and down so these will be cut sort of long ways the head needs to be cut the opposite way because it is more of a rectangle a horizontal rectangle so keep that in mind um just you know look ahead at the pieces you're cutting on the pattern guide, it shows you um, over here like which pieces are which. So you'll look at that before you cut them out to make sure, okay, I want this piece to go this direction so that you're not um, having to cut things more than once. So just be aware while you're cutting. <laughs> oh, let's see, Teresa does YouTube uh, sewing and quilting videos and Laura listens to Barbara Streisand. Christian music, 70s and 80s music, and quilting videos. I love how varied you are, Laura. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so we are gonna sew together this um, laying down cat. So we need our pieces here. We've cut them all out. We're feeling good. <laughs> and let's get, I think we're missing something. We're missing ears. I think we're missing ears. Let's see. What are we missing? Okay, we have ears somewhere. Oh, yes, we dropped the ears. Okay, I was starting to panic, y'all. <laughs> okay, it looks like a lot of pieces. We're gonna assemble it, it's gonna be fine. I promise you. So what you need to start with are the K print pieces and the N background piece. And let me make sure I have the right background piece here very quickly. This, I should have marked it two and a half by four and a half. And so we're good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a flying geese block for the ears. This is the same for both cats. So you will draw a diagonal line on the wrong side, check your pennant direction to see which way you want your pennants to go. I want them to go up and down. So I'm kind of auditioning this before I draw my line. So I know I want it to go this way and I want my line to go like this. And I will do the same thing over here. This one will go on this side, but I won't sew it on now. I have to do it separately, but I'm gonna go ahead and draw my diagonal line. So for the pennants, you'll kind of try them out if you want them to be directional before you sew. It's just a good, like, you know, habit to get into. So for these, because we're doing stitch and flip box, which means we stitch on the line, trim and flip, we're sewing right on the line, not a quarter of an inch away. So I'm gonna take this over to the machine and sew. Okay, I've told you guys um, I like sewing from the bottom of the flying geese block. I feel like it gives me a little bit more of an accurate start and my machine, your machines will be less likely to eat the pieces um, if you have sewing up from the bottom rather than the top because there's more fabric under the presser foot here. 
so it makes it a little bit of a nice clean a little bit cleaner of a seam so I sewed on that marked line and now I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch away from it and I'm going to press it like this we will have a little bit of back and forth here because <laughs> we got steps so let's trim We're going to trim that quarter of an inch seam off and now we'll press we're pressing towards the darker print fabric and now we'll repeat that step with the other side of the flying geese and this little guy makes the ears of the flying geese so it's really very simple and the reason we couldn't do them both at once is you'll see down here they overlap on the bottom okay so when we turn it we'll double check okay that's the way we want it so I'll take this over and we'll sew this seam okay again sewing up from the bottom and if your machine has a laser you don't have to draw those marked lines. You can use your guide on your machine or if you have that washi tape that has the seam, center seam and quarter inch seams on your machine, you can use that as a guide as well. So I sewed on the marked line and now we'll trim and press that going this way. And now we have a very cute little flying geese but it's also happens to be cat ears. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Cindy's here. Hey, Cindy. <laughs> Judy says she listens to Christian music, oldies music, and quilting videos while sewing. And um, Rita says she's watching a series on Acorn TV. Love it. I like Acorn shows. I don't have it right now, but we get it periodically just for, like, if there's something to watch, then we'll watch, like, a month worth of shows, and then we let it go. And, <laughs> and back and forth. Okay, so I trimmed and now I'm going to press. So we're just pressing this to give ourselves a cute set of cat ears. Okay, so now we can build out the main body of our cat. I'm gonna move these things away. So what you're going to do is you're going to have the ears, then you are going to have a J piece, which is the head, then you will have the collar and then you will have the kind of the inner part of the body which is like the belly and that is the eye piece and again with this one you'll need to be careful of your directional fabrics pay attention to which piece is going horizontal or vertical when you're cutting i did that backwards <laughs> horizontal or vertical <laughs> okay so um, we're going to sew these together. We just have a seam at each spot and we can take them all to the machine and sew one after the other. Hey Ingrid, I'm glad you're here. Okay, so I'm going to place these on my work surface the way they were on my table so that I sew them together in the right order. You can also use like a little um, block board for that to make sure you know your transporting is done <laughs> without any mess ups. So we're going to line these up. This is the ears and we're going to sew them. If we have thread in our machine, we're going to sew them. I'm going to re-thread here quite quickly. Automatic threading is a delightful thing. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to sew. And I'm sewing with my little flying geese on top so I can kind of make sure that when I go across that seam, it's going to, when I open it up, I'll still have a nice point at the bottom of my ears. So, and it worked out perfect. So now I'm going to sew on the collar. This is a little piece, so make sure it's aligned correctly on the print piece that is the head because if you're off a little bit, it's going to be noticeable because it's such a narrow piece. I have full confidence you guys can do it though. <laughs> 
Okay, so we sewed the collar on. Oops, you can see the collar. And now we're going to place that right sides together with the top of the belly piece. And again, making sure that that little thin piece is lined up nice and straight and sewing that. So you can do that all at once. And it goes together pretty quickly. You can see we've already assembled the body of the cat. So now let's take that over to the iron and press. Okay, look how cute it is. Isn't it fun, you guys? So the pressing instructions are in the booklet. And so follow those. We're gonna press this down. And then we're going to press the collar away from each shelf. So like that, and then Flip it over and press on the front to make sure your seams are all nice and tight, flat. Okay, look how cute. So this is the, like I said, this is the horizontal like laying down cat, but you can see that this portion of the body is assembled exactly the same way. The pieces are just different sizes. So you'll follow the same method um, but like the head on the one that's sitting up is a little bit bigger and the belly part, the, the front of the body, whatever you want to call it, is a little bit longer as well. So our laying down cat is just a little bit smaller, which is um, makes it look different in the quilt. You can see how they look um, here and you can see the size difference a little bit better there once they're laying there. So, <laughs> and Cindy says the cats are so cute and now they seem so easy for her to make. Oh, yay, I'm glad, Cindy. <laughs> okay, so now let's do the body. What we're gonna do is this is the body piece. This is the L piece. And we are going to take our R background piece and we're gonna sew a di or draw a diagonal line on it. This piece isn't directional, so it doesn't matter which way we're doing it. Though we should do it corner to corner. <laughs> And we will place this on the top left corner, aligned like this. So we're basically going to sew off the corner of that piece to round off the body because we're going to put this over here on this side of the body. We're building this cat to the, to the left, whereas the sitting up cat is to the right. I'll show you that too. So we're kind of going to go this way with its cute little body. So I'm going to sew on that marked line and then we will trim and press. Let's do two at once. I don't want to make this complicated for you guys, but we want to not go crazy long here. We're going to do the same thing with the tail of the cat. And I'm missing another piece. My goodness. We have pieces that are missing everywhere. That's not like me, you guys. <laughs> so we're gonna take a T piece, which I'm going to trim down because it's not here. Maybe it's under the iron. <laughs> I cut all these, I promise I did. <laughs> I'm gonna trim this piece down here. And we're gonna sew the tail piece on at the exact same time as we do the body piece. but I'm gonna use my laser for that. So this one will go this way, and this is the tail piece. Holiday, ho, let's see, Holiday. Holiday Farms is here from Las, I don't know how to say that, Las Casas, Tennessee. Where is that in Tennessee? I love it, I need to go there. <laughs> okay, so both of these are going the same direction. This body is going this way, the tail is going this way, and that kind of gives us the rounded look to the body and the tail. So let's take these to the machine and sew. So I'm going to place this, I'm making sure it's nice and straight on here, and I'm gonna sew on that marked line. And you can do this with all of your cat pieces. So if you have um, a few stitch and flip cat pieces, then get them all ready, draw your marked lines, 
and then go ahead and sew them all at once. You can clip them apart later and that will um, speed it up for you. I'm using my laser as a guide there and that makes it a little bit faster just chain piecing them together. You just clip them apart and then you can take them all over and trim them and press them. So let's go back and trim and press. Oh, in Murfreesboro, Deborah, yay! I love it. That's so fun. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and trim these corner pieces off. You guys big scrap savers or do you not save your scraps? I am not much of a scrap saver. I don't really have space to store all those scraps. So I don't do that much, but I would love to know if you guys do. Do you save, would you save a piece like that big? This is, I don't know, what is this? You could cut it into like a, I don't think even a one and a half, maybe a one and a half inch piece. I don't know, what do you guys do? <laughs> So now we're gonna open these up and press. I usually do press towards the stitch and flip corner, but if you feel like you want to press towards the, the darker print fabric, feel free. It doesn't matter here, so you can press wherever you would like. So we've done the body and the tail at the same time. And we're going to sew an S background piece on top of the tail and that will make it so it's the same size as the body so we're going to go do that and then i'll show you how it's all assembled let's do that really quick okay i'm going to sew on that seam and again you can do these steps in you know whatever order you like you can sew both cats at the same time or if you feel like that is too complicated for you it's not a rush so you know do them one at a time <laughs> it's entirely up to you so we have sewn this so the tail is at the bottom of this background piece and the stitch and flip block that we made is on the left side because the cat's body will be over here so we want that tail to come down down this way at an angle. Okay, so this is looking really cute, you guys, and it's coming together quite nicely. We're going to press this piece. Here we go. And then I will show you how it's assembled. So the body of the cat Here's the laying down cat that we just assembled. And you can see that we will sew these two pieces together. So you're gonna sew the body and the tail together. Um, that's really cute and has a nice curve to it. I love it. Um, these two are the same height. So you'll sew these together and then you will sew this background piece on here. This is the, um, where are we? This is the U background piece. So these get sewn together and that makes this half of the body the same height as this half of the body. So you will sew then this to this and then you will sew a V background piece on the top. And that will make it, once it's all assembled, so it is the same height as the sitting kitty, it's just facing the opposite direction. So the kitties kind of go like this. Well, you can't see that. <laughs> I'll show you up here. So the kitties are, um, so the tails kind of are against each other. The um, tall kitty has his tail to the right and the laying down kitty has her tail to the left. And they're a little bit admittedly boxy kitties. I'm okay with that because it's a Halloween quilt, but they're your kitties also. So if you wanted to add um, stitch and flip blocks, say maybe here on the body or here to kind of curve them off, or um, however you would like. Feel free to get creative with them. You can make them um, black kitties. I think that would be really cute. Um, lots of options for you guys as far as fabric choices. 
you know, um, if the collar is too small, you could leave that off, make your um, body of the block a little bit bigger. So it's all just kind of fun ways to customize your quilt for what you like and what your favorites are. So I hope that that was good. If you feel like you have more questions about the cat assembly or the shoe fly block assembly, please email me bev at flamingotoes.com. I am always happy to help you guys. I would love to talk through it if you guys need a little bit more help. Um, <laughs> oh, Cynthia says she just got a kitten and he is or ornery. I love it. <laughs> oh, let's see. Nell says if she, if she cuts away a portion um, two and a half inches or smaller, she doesn't save it. That's smart. <laughs> Teresa saves them, but doesn't ever use them. They multiply like bunnies. I'm telling you, right? That's why I don't save them. <laughs> Let's see. So Teresa says her daughter has two big orange haired, has two long haired orange tabby cats. And she saw pictures of the quilt on the pattern. And she's feeling she's going to be losing the quilt to the daughter. Oh, love it. Oh, Linda, you did a great kitty. Yay. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I hope this week's was um, helpful for you. Let's look at the schedule for the sew along. So this week was the shoe fly and cat row. That was the fourth row in our row quilt. Next week, we are going to do the spider and the pumpkin row. So there are some options there for you guys. I promise even though those spiders look a little bit complicated, the same methods and steps that we have been doing so far in this quilt will be used to do those spiders. So don't be worried. Um, same with the pinwheels and the pumpkins. The, having the pinwheels in the center takes a little bit longer, but I promise it's gonna look really, really cute. And if you hate those pinwheels, then make your pumpkin one size. I will give you the measurements for that so that if you want to, not piece the center of your pumpkins and you want them whole pumpkins, not pinwheel pumpkins. I'm gonna help you guys out with that next week. So we'll have a longer video again next week because we do have the two sections to do. And then we get to sew up our houses and then we will do assemblies and border. So I will let you guys know that the haunted house row will be a recorded video as well. Um, I will be heading to Utah that day for prepping for Garden of Quilts. Um, if you haven't uh, signed up for Garden of Quilts and you're in the Utah area or you want to take an impromptu trip to Utah, I would love to see you there. I believe I still have availability in all three of my classes. Plus, um, I'm helping put together the icebreaker dinner that is on Wednesday and Thursday night at Garden of, Garden of Quilts with Amanda Niederhauser and Christopher Thompson. It's a very fun game show style event where we'll have lots of quilty games, lots of quilty prizes, um, and it's just gonna be very, very fun. You guys don't wanna miss it if you're in the area. So check out Garden of Quilts. I have my events linked on today's video description, and you can check out from that link, you can go to the Garden of Quilts page and see all the info on that fun event. I really appreciate you guys tuning in this week. I had so much fun sewing with you. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any, any other videos. And I will see you next Monday. Oh, I will tell you guys on my website and the Riley Blake YouTube channel will be on August 30th, the free patterns for the cute pillows that I've been changing out here each week in the video. So that is the fall leaf one. And then there's also a really cute pumpkin with a fall leaf in the center. So check your market calendars, August 30th, that video and free pattern will be live. So I can't wait for you guys to see it. I'll have a post about it on my blog. <laughs> hey everybody, have a fabulous week. Stay cool. Hopefully if we're all thinking cool thoughts, fall will be here before we know it. Talk to you guys next week. <laughs>